lack of a better description, the area for where we would start and end our body rafting adventure, I deem our base camp. Our tubing equipment was off to the right and some thatched roof structure on the left. This hut made for a nice gathering spot because it was both elevated off the ground and well protected from the burning sun. And like usual, it was already quite hot. While our guides prepared our equipment for today's little adventure, Wellen and I would hand over guardianship of our little bundle of joy, Beverly, to my in-laws. She was now 13 months of age and already a world traveler, totally unaware she was halfway around the world in exotic Pengandaran. I examined the hut for authentic materials. Split bamboo shingles? Check. Skeleton of bamboo poles? Check. Hand toned boards? Check. Yep, seemed legit to me. Wishing to stretch my legs after hours of wearisome travel in a cramped car, plus further explore my unusual surroundings, I wandered down the road a few meters until I heard, then saw, what appeared to be a shimmering creek down below. The waters looked most enticing, only getting down there, not so much. The trail leading down to the waters was so precipitous, it was approaching a 45 degree incline. I feared I may journey down okay, but not make the return trip unscathed, at least not without the assistance of a rope. So instead, I enjoyed the view through a nifty compact zoom camera. It astounded me as here I stood about 100 feet from the creek, yet I could see just how clear this water was. Except for a blue tint, it was all but crystal clear. Not some brackish goo from water that stagnated for too long, nor was it iced tea cedar water ubiquitous to parks in New Jersey. You could readily discern the rocks through which it flowed. It was as vigorous as it was pristine, a sign of a healthy stream. And I wasn't alone in my admiration, for some children were frolicking down yonder. That was a bit disconcerting, as the current moved along swiftly. Speaking as a concerned parent, I was happy to see all these youth were wearing flotation devices. Papa was already showing off his prowess at baby duty while I flashed my near albino looking legs. My alabaster legs must have appeared a curiosity for the perpetually brown peoples surrounding me. Having returned from our adventure early in the afternoon, our baby, like everyone else, was sweating. Yes, it was that hot. Don't know how Mama, on the left, wore that dark burqa when the temperature was hovering in the 90s. Tara, on the right, awaits her turn to hold baby Beverly. Surrounded by all this food, I did what naturally came to me. I ate. In my left hand, I was poking at some jackfruit. The rule of thumb while consuming this strangeness was, if it don't stink, it ain't ripe. And by stink, I mean like rotten flesh or perhaps spoiled garbage. Actually, if you could get past the smell, jackfruit was pretty tasty. The round green stuff, according to my authoritative wife, was some type of eggplant, believe it or not. I only wish I could sit cross-legged. I was the original odd man out, having to hang my weary legs over the side as I munched down some protein. Actually, Mama or Soi Le Ming had the same idea, stretching out her legs. I wasn't sure if I was red in the face from the physical exertion or I got a little sunburned, perhaps merely a combo of the two. Meanwhile, Tara to my right enjoyed her fish feast in silent rapture. Indeed, fatigable Papa, or Suja Miko, worked wonders at becoming our cranky baby, complaining in her own special way about this repressive heat. I almost wish I was back on the water already. Some of the exotic foods comprised in our veritable banquet. I believe the fish they served was tilapia and as surprisingly tasty as it was quite unexpected. It wouldn't surprise me in the least if this fish was grown via aquaculture right around here somewhere. Indonesia, 270 million strong, ranks as the fourth largest populace. This is far from an accident as over the years their people became extremely adept at growing their own food. As we ate, if one looked off to the right in the background, you could make out the pile of inner tube shoes on our little quest. I'm so glad our helpful guides were kind enough to carry these for miles through the tropical forest, or we'd all be exhausted about now. 
I, the token American, was being interviewed on camera about my Green Canyon experience today. I kept it positive and gave it two thumbs up. But truth be known, this outing kicked my middle-aged butt, both figuratively and elsewise, bouncing over all those rather hard rocks. And that hour-long march through the jungle on foot would have been a whole lot more pleasant had we been driven back in a jeep or such. But then, sigh, I guess we'd have missed all that hidden beauty tucked away in this wild expanse here in the deep rainforest of Pangondaran, western Java. All this exercise? You bet I was hungry. As long as it wasn't too spicy or crawling around on my plate, I ate it. And so, I'm willing to bet, what have you?